Welcome back to the behind the scenes series of The Reconciler. I'm filmmaker Sean Justice. If you didn't already know, most films are shot out of sequence. It was no exception with The Reconciler. Of course, in doing this, you have to maintain the integrity of the story and emotional flow of each scene. As a filmmaker or actor, you have to know where you're at. When I shot my first movie, Going the Distance, I distinctly remember one of my actors blurting out, I don't know where I am. Of course, he knew where he was, just not the mindset that his character needed to be in for that scene. So as the crew was setting up, he and I had a talk and he dialed it in. My advice? Make sure you discuss this together if you need to. Okay, with that, let's get behind the scenes. Hey, hey, reconciler! Picking back up from our last episode where Jeremy was yelling to the reconciler. We talked about microphones in the room, I think. So he feels like maybe if I yelled to the guy and talked to him, that he'll hear me and let us out. Hello, anyone there? Tilt down to see our audio set up with Steve in the back. It's not up to me. Wait, wait, wait. You forgive me? I'm not the so as the dialogue picks up between the three of them again, we bring back in the other actors in their position so he has an eye line to look to. This reconciler just need to think we're good, okay? And then he's gonna let us out of here. Yeah. It Scott actually changed out of his reconciler clothes, even though he's still doing his lines there, to just make sure that it keeps clean and doesn't get sweated in and all those fun things that happen on set. He's heard everything you say, then he knows you don't really mean it. Hey, reconciler! Good. Let's move on to the. I think that was actually right before the yelling, so we shot out of sequence there a bit which you will do now and then, just for efficiency's sake. And I like how you kind of look up a couple of times as you sit down. Okay. And you were just, oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So kind of still in that, yeah. Yeah, and uh, at the and end. Vail is there watching the door just to make sure that people don't go in and out while we're shooting. Just a little bit. And, yeah. yeah. And back up a little bit, please. Right. Okay, and action. Are you done? Now come on, it's time to talk for real. Well, actually, I think this was after the so yell. And then he sits there for quite a while uh, okay. talking to the other two. James, I forgive you. Now can we get out of here, please? So now we rotated around and to get all of okay, Jordan's close-ups. I forgive you. Now can we get out of here, please? It's not up to me. Wait, wait, wait. You forgive me? I'm not the one who did anything wrong. What are you talking about? <laughs> I think this is the third day of shooting. We were really developing a camaraderie between us, as you saw Kevin and I uh, talking and, and joking around there. It was really cool because we got so good at being able to read each other and what each other wanted out of the shots, out of the scenes. If you can find team members like that, it just makes it so much easier and so much quicker. To, to get your and shots. Settle. Action. So the soldier and his son escaped then? <laughs> a veil. I think that's Vale's son, actually. Yes. We shot this in June, so I think people are out of school wait, wait, already. Sure. 22. When do you take it off right now? Well, so you, my, my thought was, is it that childish? I think we moved over to Scott, yeah, of course, I'm moving to Scott now because uh, Jordan's reading from his script. Oh, I'm walking. No, no, no. Oh. Sorry. More frustration on your part. You just got to take that tie off. Okay. Yeah. All right. Is it that childish? He actually had a tie on, so I think we cut into him after that point. <laughs> Especially when it comes to faith. Faith? You mean religion? No. Well, what do you mean? It's not religion. So part of the story deals with, you know, these two brothers who have kind of taken their own spiritual journey. You know, one likes the order of, of church, of, you know, the hymns, the more traditional ways where Jordan's character has gone more of the less structured way. And it's, we're not saying that one is right or wrong, but they definitely feel that each other is wrong. But they come to, of course, find that their views and respect each other's, you know, take on how to work out their faith. Well, it's 
James here doesn't understand that he needs to go to church and that he should be talking over me right now. Yes, that's oh, right. Oh, yeah. that's when we're both talking at the same time. <laughs> I don't know, these are talking at the same time. I knew you could right. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, In the script, it's hard to show talking over each other. So you'll see what happens. So they start arguing. I have not. It's been two years since you've been to church. How do you know? And besides, going to church has nothing to do with whether... You sure seem to be. I'm sorry. Can someone explain to me what's going on here? James he just doesn't understand when it comes to church. It's not even about that. You think church? I'm sorry, that was my fault. <laughs> That's how it should have worked. Fights our parents tooth and nail. When we get to be 18, he... Let's go back. So each of the characters, or each of the people, were mic'd individually with lapel mics. The shotgun that we used, it was good, but it was used more as a reference microphone because those lapels are so good at having a presence to them, as opposed to a shotgun in this room is going to be super echoey. Even though you might still have some echo on the uh, lapels, it's, it's not going to be as much. And you know, with such important dialogue, you, you want to make sure that you have really good audio so that the audience can really get into it as opposed to being distracted by uh, something that's super echoey. If you're as a filmmaker just relying on uh, shotgun microphones, make sure you get as close as you can just out of frame so that you're not dealing with a lot of uh, extemporary audio. And we did have a mic on the camera, but that was purely for syncing uh, audio. As the slate there clicks, you can actually see in the edit of the timeline between the two. And you can just match those up real easily. And there are, are tools now that actually allow you to sync audio tracks um, real easily. I think it's called Synchronize. Well, what do you mean? So again, our concentration is on, on Jordan here. Back up to what is, uh, <coughs> have anything to do with space, probably. <clears throat> How do you know? Okay, line to court. Uh, okay. And oftentimes I interject uh, moments when I just felt maybe something was going off the rails or off the track. I'd back them up and i give them some direction. Again, time is precious. <laughs> All, right. All right, I'll keep it here, sorry. Take it up there. One of my pieces of advice as a newer director is don't be afraid to step in when you need to. That's your job. Take command uh, of the scene or of the situation, even if you have to yell cut uh, and give them you know, some different direction. It's efficiency. If you spend an extra minute or two and you already know the scene is bad or it's off the rails, just stop and start over. Give your direction. Don't be afraid to step in. You're the authority, you are the guide for them. And I think actors prefer that, that you have them on the right path. They admire that and they appreciate that very much. They made us go. Come on. So I got out of there as quickly as I could, as soon as I could. So I got out of there as soon as I could. Don't forget that you as the filmmaker are the captain of the ship and the hierarchy should flow from you. Also, you're the one who sets the tone of the set. Actors, you might have an idea on how you feel about a scene should be played, but remember that you are there to bring your skills to help fulfill the vision of the filmmaker. They'll have the vision for the entire film and how it plays out from scene to scene. If you don't understand something or why you're being asked to play the role a certain way, ask them and clarify. You won't regret it. In the next episode, I'll talk about the importance of a script supervisor and what they do. Just so you know, I'll be releasing one or two of these videos a week, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and turn the notifications bell on so you can catch them when they come out. If you like this video, please let us know by liking it, and please leave us any comments or questions as well. I try to respond as quickly as I can. If you want to watch The Reconciler or any of our other movies, click on the link below. Finally, I often get questions about what training, software programs, and equipment I'd recommend for beginners. To help with this, I've set up a resources page on our site. On it, I talk about some great training courses and some other resources for filmmaking, and even list some website tools to build your own site. The final part of the resources page are kits of recommended products. 
This includes various camera packages, grip and lighting gear, and post-production tools. The link is justicepictures.com resources. It's also in the description below. Check it out. That's it for now. We'll see you next time on The Reconciler.